We have talked many times about significant milestones in your career and the bigger game. This now marks 50 years since you created, I guess what ordinary people would say is the first ever female tennis players union. How did you do it and what difference does it make? Whoa. <laughs> that, how did we do it? How yeah. long do you have here? See, I always tried to get the men and women together in the late 60s. The men always said no. So the next best thing is, well, then we have to get together, the women. And so basically we all helped each other. Like I would ask Rosie Casals or Betty Stove or Francoise Dewar to say, who do you have influence over? Each one of you have to deliver two people to this meeting we're going to have to see if we can have this association or union. And it was really hectic because players are always practicing. It's hard to get players together. So this is on a Thursday in 1973 before Wimbledon started on a Monday. We got 60 plus people in the room here at the, uh, at the Gloucester. And at the end of it, um, well, let's talk about before the end of it, I had Betty Stove. She's Who was a very Dutch, large Dutch woman. Large, strong. And I said, Betty, come over here. I'm laughing because I'm looking up at her. I go, you have to stand at the door and don't let one player out until we either have our, our union or association or we don't. But don't let anybody out until we vote. She, starts, she looks down at me and she starts laughing. But she, got, she says, don't worry. And she went back and put her arms across like this and said, don't you come out. <laughs> it was and she just stood in front of the door. Yeah, I could relax. So anyway, I got up there, I remember the podium, microphone, and I was like, <sighs> I said, please God, let this happen. And so I said to them, this is a moment of truth, and we have to do this, and we have to do it today. We have to be together. We've had two tours, we've been split up, that's no good. We have to always make sure that at least at the minimum, the top players are always together to provide the best entertainment and performance to our fans. We owe it to them. And they, they voted on the first round? Yes, everyone voted yes. And what did it physically do? How did it help you all in the immediate? What did it do? It gave us one voice and power. Power to negotiate. For equal pay? That was obviously, uh, for me personally, at the top but we had to argue for other things. We got very little money, but by 73, we're starting to get prize money. You know, I, I did very well, because I was winning. That was kind of the top of my career, but m a lot, most people were not. And we really wanted to add tournaments at lower, lower levels to give more and more women a chance to play and make money. And the, the three things why we had this association that any girl born in this world, if she were good enough, would have a place to compete. Number two, to be appreciated for our accomplishments, not only our looks. And number three, most importantly, to be able to make a living playing the sport that we loved and had a passion to play. And we want it for others. And what this did is provided a platform for every single professional woman tennis player a platform for her to be a leader, be effective in her community, wherever she lived. It could be a village, it could be a town, it could be a country, it could be a continent. This year also happened to be, so the 1973 was celebrating, marking the 50th anniversary of the WTA and what you did, but it also happened to be the year you won a triple crown at Wimbledon. <laughs> How? So I for those who don't know, that means singles, doubles, doubles and, and mixed. mixed doubles. It doesn't happen very often. Almost never. In fact, you were the last one to win at Wimbledon, well, that, that, that triple crown. Well, today most players won't play three events. Okay. I love tennis. I could never, I was the first one to arrive at Wimbledon, the last one to leave. If I could be on the court hitting a ball and I love doubles more than singles. So to play mixed doubles with Owen Davidson, doubles with Rosie Casals, and oh yeah, the singles. <laughs> and, oh yeah, the singles. But uh, my I'm point trying to think is, who I played in the final. Oh, I think it was Chris Everett. Yeah, but my point is though that here you are winning. I mean, I guess that takes a lot of effort to play all those matches and doing all this stuff off stage, so to speak. Oh all yes. All this activism. How did you? I mean, how does that even work? How how can you do that? I made mentally, a physically. I made a decision when I was 12 years old, my epiphany, that 
I would fight for equality the rest of my life. And I made a very conscious decision that I wouldn't win as many titles as a player if I were going to do this. Did you? Oh, absolutely. I knew that was so obvious. Because I wanted to just if you're working off the it, court like I was, I mean, I would go to sponsor, I'd go see a sponsor in New York in the morning and then take a train to Philadelphia and play in the finals of Philadelphia. That is not the way to win titles. And I'm sure I didn't win that one. I think I lost to Chrissy Everett.